Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. And I filmed this video on summer solstice of 2023. Uh, the weather isn't that nice, so I decided to come to this uh, cafe for a warm, cozy lunchtime and sketching session. So this cafe is located somewhere in East Vancouver. Ooh, they have a lot of stuff on the menu. So this cafe is a bit nostalgic. I love that tablecloth over there and a lot of cute little decorations. And here I am enjoying my lunch. So I ordered a cup of lavender, vanilla latte and the chicken wrap. I'm just gonna sketch my latte in my art journal. If you wanna see how I sketch coffee um, in my art journal, you can check out my earlier cafe sketches. Ooh, that's a pretty big cup of latte. And I love this little pot of cactus in front of me on the table. I'm gonna sketch it as well in my art journal instead of that chicken wrap. And here's how I set up in a cafe. I have a gooseneck tripod attached to the table edge and my phone is gonna go on top. And I'm just gonna use one fine liner pen to draw. It's a Winsor Newton brand 0.8 tip fine liner pen. All right, so let's begin. So drawing part is two times faster than my actual drawing speed. And this time the foreground element is gonna be this little pot of cactus. So I would like to form a mental image of the size and placement first on the paper. Now I am drawing the head part of this rhino ceramic pot. The horns, the shape of the head, and these hoofs. And the opening of the pot is an ellipse. This is the bottom arc of it. Drawing the back of the rhino shape and adding the uh, one of the ears, hatch it a little bit to give it three dimension, and the pointy little eye, shading the edges around so it's more than just an outline. Okay, so now I'm ready to draw the overlapping shapes of these cactus, starting with the one on the left and the one next to it. These are kind of like little fingers. And finishing uh, the back arc of the opening, drawing the one behind, and then using very gentle hand pressure to draw the furry texture of these cute cactus. And also the little spikes in vertical rows, very loosely and quickly as well, so it doesn't look too mechanical, but more organic with rapid movement. And these cactus, they're kind of looking like little cucumbers as well. I believe when we're drawing cucumbers, it's very much the same kind of technique, but without the, the, the furry texture. Yeah, adding some more loose vertical uh, little dots, little bumps. And a, few, a couple more for the one behind. Okay, now using broken lines to draw the brim and also the relieved areas, you know, having a bit of higher elevation, the muscles of this uh, rhino ceramic pot, giving him a little smile, a bit of accentuation underneath the chin, underneath the belly, the hoofs, accentuation around the brim, coloring this area with pretty much solid black ink uh, to show the soil, dark colored soil in there and to make the cactus stand out better. Okay, so that's it for the drawing of the cute little pot. Now I'm drawing this horizontal line defining the table edge. And also establishing a very basic sense of space, the tabletop and the space behind it. So now for the first layer of the space behind, I'm drawing uh, the top part of the chair is wooden, so I'm just getting these loose horizontal lines done for the grainy texture. Yeah, so that's the first layer of the, uh, the main scenery in front of the table. Now, I do need to take a little bit of time to see the placement of the next thing. 
and it's okay if you're a little slow. There's no need to rush it. So really take your time uh, to think about how big you should be drawing. This is the back of another chair. So this is kind of like a, a side view of that chair, a little foreshortened. Yeah, two pieces and the seat area. Okay, the accentuation on the bottom of the seat. And this is the, uh, the draping area of the tablecloth overlapping around it. Okay, so right now this drawing part is very abstract. So now I'm forming the um, rectangular prism shape of the table covered with a tablecloth. So you can see better right now is a rectangular prism. Very loose little shape. Okay, so now just adding another chair on the other side of this little table. Again, this is kind of a, a side view with a little foreshortened shape for this chair as well. Okay, adding a bit of lines for the support of the chair. Now, I think I'm ready to draw the pattern, the mandala design on the tablecloth, starting with a circular shape and then drawing these points of the star shape. Yeah, the shape is looking a little squished because we're looking at the table surface from an angle. And yeah, some more little circles inside that design and some little cross shapes around the edges. Some more little curves drawn very loosely because it's fabric, so we don't have to press very hard to draw those patterns on it. And don't forget the negative space, the hollowed area of the chair there, the accentuation or the railing of the chair. And now I think it's time to move on to the next layer, the counter. Yeah, so again, this horizontal line, it defines the uh, counter edge. And then I want to add this chair right in front of me. It's looking larger than the ones on the right hand side because it's closer to me. Patch it a little bit to give three dimension for the bars. All right, so now it's time to move on to the main area to construct the structure of the counter. Just drawing the thickness and the uh, vertical divisions of the counter area and the height. So here I have one large chunk of shape defined, uh, the width and the height of the counter. Now it's just the inner details, adding the hatching for that wooden support over there and then drawing very loosely of the hanging tinsels. It's very feels like Christmas and also a party time. Yeah, so just drawing the, uh, the curve of the overall hanging shape and then the loose little chips of the hanging tinsel. Yeah, so I think um, this hanging tinsel is adding more interest to this sketch containing a lot of um, uh, horizontal and vertical lines. Now just adding this brick pattern for the wooden counter behind the tinsels and the chairs. Yeah, add a bit of interesting uh, pattern for this uh, large chunk of shape. Now it's time to move on. This is like a little wooden board. When I'm drawing, I'm constantly adding accentuation for some parts, so it's just more than shapes. Add volume, even for the smallest shapes. So now I just drew the hair of the barista and her forehead, her nose, and a little smile, the neck area, the collar of her shirt. So the human body and also their outfits contains a lot of um, beautiful curves. And just using two small and simple curves to define her calm facial expression, her eyebrow and her eye. So the arm is made up of roughly uh, two longer curves, almost parallel, and a little hand shape. I think she was making a sandwich or a wrap. Okay, so now I'm ready to draw these cute little decorations on the uh, counter edge. First was this uh, wooden Easter bunny. 
with the outline and the whiskers, the eye. And then this is kind of like a cutting board. Uh, was very nice. Was a very nice quote on it. And on this cutting board, I think it says, "Bless the food that we are consuming," or something. And now I'm drawing this Christmas bear holding the cutting board, starting with his outfit and his face, the snout, the eyes, and that's very much it. This cafe has a nice taste of, of the holidays, like Christmas, Easter, and、um, it has a sense of、um, Christianity. I'm drawing the outline of these two glass jars holding cookies and muffins. After that, I'm drawing these little disc shapes of the、uh, cookies and the、uh, scones, and then the abstract shapes of、uh, ovens. And other cookwares. And up to now, I think I have the foreground and the middle ground items done. Just finishing her apron and the stuff around her. So my drawing process is always very spontaneous. I don't like to overthink. Most of the time, I just try to see shapes and not, you know,、uh, spending too much energy trying to define what those things are. Now I think I'm drawing a sandwich grill, which has a really flat rectangular prism shape, and the handle is a dark colored shape, and then other kind of little knickknacks around it. So as I always mention in my previous YouTube videos, you don't have to know what you're drawing; just focus on the shapes that you see、um, in terms of sizes and proportions. I just added the、uh, the grainy texture for the wooden board on the right hand side of the counter there. Yeah, so so far I have the foreground and the middle ground elements well defined. There's another covering over here with a lot of holes, just to separate uh, those uh, sitting area with this、uh, sanitized area. Okay, so now I'm ready to move on to the next layer, which is the background, containing a lot of big,、uh, medium and small abstract shapes. So these are like little、uh, jars, cups, and stuff around this dishwashing area. This is the back counter. So when I'm drawing, I'm also defining some of the shapes with solid black ink. More than just a mass of lines. This is kind of like the faucet for washing dishes, and another machine. So what I'm seeing is just a bunch of overlapping shapes, mostly squares and rectangles. And here comes a pretty big shape. It's a wall、uh, behind everything. And、um, a shelf with some boxes stacked on top. And here's another、um, shelf, pretty high, close to the ceiling, with some、um, ingredients in boxes on there. And some more horizontal lines, pretty much parallel to it. And this black box is the、uh, stereo. Uh, that plays music, and some more little block shapes around it. A lamp on the very upper left side. So I'm drawing freehand, and also the proportions and the placement of these objects are not exactly the same as in the photo or in reality, and that's okay. That's the fun about you know sketching is that you don't have to be the same as reality. Uh, sometimes I have to shrink the、uh, the sizes and move things around、um, to fit those things better on my page. And here I am drawing some more floating boards, holding、um, boxes of tea and other ingredients on it. So one of my philosophies of sketching the everyday world is about finding peace. And order within chaos. 
most of the time when we're looking at an urban or landscape or an interior space, it looks like it contains thousands of details. So my goal is always about, you know, coming down and, you know, just capture the essence, paying attention to the foreground, middle ground, and the background areas and tackle one shape at a time. So when I'm sketching this honeybee hive pattern, I am not sketching every single hexagon that's on there on the wall, omitting some, leave uh, some empty spaces for the viewers to imagine. Just drawing this wire, connecting the speakers, a stereo, and some more machines. Okay, so now I am going to take the last uh, two minutes to add some final shapes that I see around. It's not a perfect sketch, just like all of my other sketches that I have done so far over the past 11 years. None of them are perfect, but each of them is unique. It has a lot of life containing my sensations, my seeing of the world around me. Now just adding these loose horizontal lines to, to, to define the wooden planks the made up of the back wall and the wooden boxes and a door there, actually the door to the bathroom. And then drawing the door frame and the wooden shape on top of it. Now I see this nice lamp and I don't want to miss it. It really adds a sense of uh, symbolic meaning to this sketch. So here is a look of my finished line work of the cafe interior. So this is a very quiet little cafe with just one barista. Maybe she's just the owner. And now I'm ready to add colors, lots of warm colors on this um, cold rainy day. It's a really super cozy interior. I'm going to start with the warm colors as always. So there's a really warm glow of yellow in here. Most of the uh, furniture here, including the tables, the chairs, uh, the counter edges, the tops are, you know, all wooden. So yeah, having this warm yellow, yellow, orange town. So uh, now I'm just adding the lightest down that I see on the very bottom. So I very, very rarely start, you know, the very first layer painting the original colors of everything. Um, this is very much like an underpainting that gives everything a, uh, a warm luminosity of a warm atmosphere on a rainy day indoors. Okay, so now beginning to kind of adding the second layer, starting with the cactus. This is like a mix of viridian green and a little bit of lime green, wet onto wet. And this is a mix of uh, yellow ochre with a little bit of orange for these wooden boards here and there. Playing with water control and more or less uh, burnt sienna. Yeah, so this part of the wooden counter that contains more uh, mint and darker browns. Yeah, so it's really fun to play with the different levels of browns, lots of burnt sienna, and to make the burnt sienna uh, a little less intense, I mix in some water. To make the burnt sienna more of a sepia color, I mix in a bit of um, cobalt blue. So when painting watercolors, I always put a darker tone on top of a lighter tone. Okay, just painting the negative spaces in between the chairs, those hollowed areas of the chairs. And the floor has a bit of stain of a sepia color, kind of reflective. And I'm um, grabbing some sepia for a cast shadow underneath the counter edge. Now, grabbing a little bit of cherry red to paint the Christmas outfit for the teddy bear there. And some more leftover brown to paint the bear's fur. Wet on dry, a medium brown on top of a lighter yellow. Bit of lemon yellow for that light bulb there. And also kind of a mint yellow for the cutting board the bear's holding, uh, the cookies, 
uh, the, the barista is wearing a nice warm shirt and apron. For skin colors, I mix red and orange together and mix in a lot of water to get a diluted color. For skin tone, a little bit red for the cheek. Just keep playing with the browns. There are actually a lot of uh, tones of browns in this interior. And also grabbing a little bit royal purple and magenta pink for the hanging tinsels around. Yeah, these are really charming colors popping out from the browns. Yeah, and then mix my own gray with uh, cobalt blue, a little bit royal purple, and a tiny little green to paint those gray areas and also the shaded areas around the ceiling and the walls. Super diluted. Yeah, so after painting those warm colors, now I'm moving on to the cold colors, mostly the grays of the chairs. Again, I mix my own gray with uh, blue, green, and royal purple. Yeah, same for the uh, ceramic pot over here. It's a diluted. I'm going to begin with a diluted gray and also leaving some parts unpainted for the shine of the ceramic surface. It's very important. And then cleaning my brush on the towel to paint these vibrant colors that I forgot to paint. Uh, these oranges, yellow oranges of the tablecloth here. The mandala pattern. Mixing some more red into the orange to get a red-orange tone. This, these colors are so nostalgic. Kind of like the old village style. And then some blues and turquoise around these warm colors on the pattern. And also the back of that chair is actually wooden, so I used leftover yellow brown. And some more diluted grays to paint the cast shadows, shadows underneath uh, the furniture here and there, and also those kitchen utensils. Yeah, lots of leftover colors. Some more grays for the metallic machines, bit of shadows here and there. Other than the uh, saturated colors, uh, the muted colors of shadows and shaded areas are also very important to bring out the charm of those saturated colors. So we do need contrast, uh, not just playing with uh, vibrant colors only. And now I'm mixing some more uh, gr dark gray. So this is very much black. Yeah, so I think I did mix a little bit black into the leftover grays and again skipping around the bright spots of the shiny ceramic surface like the bulging area of the belly of the rhino and also around the legs to uh, give the three-dimensionality of this little pot and also some leftover greens Mix some more yellow browns with um, burnt sienna in the middle orange, diluted with some water to paint these wooden planks of the table using thin brush marks wet on dry to get the grainy texture of wood. So the details in the foreground is very important, the grainy texture of the wooden table. Final polish and that's very much it. So thank you so much for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. I try to update my channel with two to three new videos every week. And I will see you again very soon next time. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.